Look at that coming out. Isn't that gross? I'll just let her go. I had a big mess coming here though. So today we're going to tackle the rest of the coolant system. As you've seen in the last one, it was about the radiator. Now it's going to be the rest of the system. And I'm going to tell you, I was like, some of this may seem, well, get to the good stuff, get the performance stuff, all that. We're going to get there, guys, but I think it's important for you to see what you need to do and what you should be doing before you just slam a bunch of horsepower, turn up the boost and go. If you want a, a somewhat reliable, now when you get into performance, Sometimes that goes away, but if you want a somewhat reliable and, and to pack the most punch you can, you want to make sure that you got everything ready for that. And what this is about, uh, what I'm showing you a lot, is all the kind of behind what has to happen or what you should be doing to get there. Uh, so all this work, be meticulous, get it right, and have some class doing it as well. Uh, that's why I like to make things clean up. If you want, you want cars like this or to get to this point, uh, it, 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 you got to start on a foundation and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. The best part of all this work that you're seeing, it's really building up to something. Uh, we're going to see these cars plus the, the one, the black one that you've seen in previous videos. And you're going to see that actually on the track and, and how we get there and kind of the, let's, there'll be some trials and tribulations, obviously part of it too. But uh, the best way to get there is the road, that, the kind of the path I'm setting out. This is pretty typical. This applies to any type of car out there. It doesn't matter if it's a muscle car, if it's a sport compact like we're doing here. Uh, I'm gonna have some muscle cars on this channel too. I've actually got one. I don't think you've seen it yet. It is in my banner. There's a clue uh, after that. So let's get on with it. So we're gonna actually do the water uh, coolant areas. Um, I'll show you exactly what I'm planning to do here. The uh, water pipe here, uh, that's what we commonly call it here, is functional, completely fine to use, but it doesn't look so pretty, does it? It's got some rust on it, uh, surface rust. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to bead blast it, and then I actually do a, a, a clear coat on it as well to help prevent in the future. I use a high heat, use the VHT brand clear coat, and that way it bakes on well with the heat, plus it's protected well because there's a lot of heat uh, with the, the turbocharger near that area as well the other thing you're going to see on here is uh, this there's a plug in what is actually the normally the turbo return for a coolant coming in here and some of you think this is actually the the feed but it is not it is actually the return if you followed the flow properly what uh, i'm going to do is actually take that plug out i'm going to get the right connector for the turbo because they had it actually the return coming over here uh, to the uh, upper uh, water neck there, thermos from above the thermostat. Um, I prefer taking the thermostat equation out of it to help the flow, so that's why I'm going to put it back. So what I'm planning to do in that case is replace that uh, this uh, uh, water neck here, uh, uh, part of the thermostat housing, and then I'll I'll just plug the normal. Uh, sensor that normally goes in there because we've eliminated that in this uh, fabrication that we've done. So other th things I'm going to do is re you can see actually the heater hoses, they've actually got them reversed, the the in and outs are hoses, they got them backwards, which is no big deal, they'll still flow, but they're not configured right. But I'm putting new ones in as well. I'm going to take it down the uh, lower thermostat housing and also be blast it and clean that up as well and, and the sensors and that too just to make it fresh and I'll also clear coat that. Over here we have the parts kind of all ready to go. These are the heater hoses. Uh, that's the, the neck that we're going to use from above thermostat. Nice replacement there. Yeah, so let's get to work. So 
So here we were looking at the uh, the remnants that I took out. Things are pretty dirty, I noticed. This is a low mileage talon that I'm working on. So it might need a coolant flush. It's probably been sitting a lot in its life, considering it's a, uh, how old? It's almost 30 years old now. What I'm gonna do now is blast uh, these parts. There's my blaster right here. And then we'll blast away. All right. So, just the vacuum that comes on with everything. I actually got, I'll take maybe through my, my media blaster sometime. This is the typical uh, Harbor Freight uh, Princess Auto in Canada. I've done a lot of different adaptions to it. And I've done quite a bit of things to make this a lot better cabinet, including recirculating the media. Got a little duster double thing there, canister, and it kind of comes down and recirculates anyway. And I made the cabinet deeper. I can open this lid up and yeah, I'll take you through that sometime, but right now let's just get blasting. Okay, change of plans, folks. Uh, ran into a few snags after I blasted, and I'll uh, just share that stuff with you right now. Uh, so the first thing, I'm gonna take over to the water pipe that was in it. So this is from a later version, probably 91 and up, which doesn't matter that much actually, but the first thing that uh, is a bit of trouble that I don't like is there's an O-ring that goes here that goes into your water pump, and this is very, very jagged. Actually, it looks, it is worse in person than it is in video. That just bothers me because it can kind of snag that O-ring over time or rub and, and wear it out. It shouldn't move too much, but I just don't like it. It's not to my um, spec, I guess, that I would put my name to it. Talk to the owner of the car and we'll replace it. But this is the biggest thing that I want to talk about is this uh, ORB in here. It is totally destroyed this was originally plugged but i don't think that's what the reason what caused the problem it was actually just corrosion over time so it you can see it's sandblasted really nice and cleaned up but i uh, just can't use that without having to do a lot of work and i don't want it or else kind of mickey mouse things together and use jb weld or whatever which is not what i want to do in my parts that i have for dsms because i've been in for years i found a 90 uh, pipe that I got that'll work great for this. Just so you know, you can't get the turbo uh, units anymore uh, for this. Um, the non-turbo ones are there, but they don't have all the ports. So you'd have to make the ports. So what uh, I'm going to do is because I have parts and the, the 90 ones are really sought after because they didn't have a port that went into the, the oil cooler water jacket, I guess, because they had their own air to oil cooler actually that went in the front in the 90s so these are pretty sought after but can't be bought anymore but i'm gonna give it up just to get this owner going i'll just show you kind of what's going on with this one so basically what i'm i i because he's going with a black theme in his engine i am actually uh doing vht ceramic high heat paint on it i did the primer and now i'm doing the, the black high heat paint and i'll do a clear on it as well so I'm letting that kind of dry. I like to let it cure for seven days before I put the clear coat, just to make sure it's not too soft. Otherwise the clear coat sometimes just blends right in and uh, kind of makes a real mess actually, if you've ever experienced that. So I can't really show you what the uh, ORB fitting looks like, but you can just think of it as perfect. All the ends are perfect on it. And uh, we'll put that in in a few days. I'll show you the nice black uh, job I did on it with the VHT ceramic flame proof paint and uh, prime clear coat or sorry prime and then i put the high heat uh flat black on and then i put the high heat or the flame proof clear coat all flame proof sorry um yeah i've used this before and it bakes really good once it actually gets heat this is just uh without the heat applied yet 
um, but it cures actually with the high heat itself. So it, it actually works really well. And uh, I could, this is an aluminum pipe. I could have left it shiny, but we're going with a black theme on this car. So yeah, that's what uh, I've done so far in cleaning up. I'm going to the next step. Coming over to this table here or bench, this is the the upper coolant housing uh, the, with the water neck on it, the one that was out of the car. You can see this is very corroded over time with the antifreeze. And I know if I stand below this, just, it'll be extremely rough. And uh, I don't like how that may or may not seal or give problems over time or through the corrosion. So I'm not going to use this one. Plus it was modified for this dash six connector, which isn't going to be needed either. So uh, out of my parts bin, um, I sandblasted this one and uh, it'll be fine. You can see it's still a little rough here after sandblasting, but it, it cleaned up pretty well. And I'm not worried about that not sealing. It's pretty, not very deep at all. And I just know with a clamp on it, it'll be fine from experience. The lower coolant housing, which is where the, the uh, really awful looking thermostat and because of this is another reason why i'm going to flush the engine and the rad and the whole system too just to clean this up but going to get a new thermostat as well haven't decided whether we're going to do a oem or maybe go a little cooler sometimes that helps um, in a high performance high turbocharged car i've done that on some and it has made a difference but uh, i got to think about that and then do recommendation to the owner which we're going to get and this is the one that was in the car. I blasted it the uh, the lower uh, thermostat housing, coolant housing, and uh, I I checked out all the the switches here. Everything worked fine. Um, the only thing that on this one, this port for some reason was just JB welded, not very well. Not sure what owner did that. Doesn't matter. I kind of cleaned that out, and I retapped, and I was going to put a a 1 8 NPT bar fitting in because this is part of the way the heater, the heater circuit works, heater hose circuit. But I think it needs a bigger barb anyway, so I am going to do a, a quarter inch NPT and do that properly because this kind of loosely fit. It was a little too big, so we'll change that. These are brand new heater hoses. The ones that are in it actually might be okay to use, but I don't know how old they are. And since we're doing all the whole system and it will also be nice clean hoses, we're going to do them as well. We're also going to replace the upper and lower rat hose as well with these, these fine ones here. They're silicone based, so it's pretty nice. So we'll put those in. I'll clean up where that gasket is a little bit here too. It's going to go. Uh, it's pretty good right now, but I'll just give it a little maybe scotch pad or something. And uh, that'll be that. And... I think we'll be good there and go on to the next thing until we get a few parts and some paint is ready, etc. We are going to take care of uh, this gunk in this ray radiator. See what's coming out there, which is not what antifreeze should look like. Obviously, that is rust from the engine itself, the block. And the cooling because the aluminum wouldn't rust so let's clean this out and i'll end up flushing the the block as well once i take the water pump off and make a mess in the shop look at that coming out isn't that gross we'll just keep going till it's clear uh, wow, I'm using uh, hot RO water. Um, we actually got our RO system on our water for our house, so that's the good thing. Um, I recommend using very distilled or RO water for this, but uh, let's just keep doing that till it's clean. I'll turn up a little more horsepower here on the water. All right. You can see that it's cleared, cleared up a little bit now. You can start to see the rocks behind it, so that's good. Actually, it's coming a lot clearer. You can see there. Yeah. Definitely needed this clean for sure. I was running it upside down, and it's clear as can be, so I think we've got her. So there's the the water pump, the new one on the right, obviously, and the and the old one on the left. 
I'm gonna go over a few things here. I'm gonna put some new hardware in, just uh, similar to what Mitsubishi, or I should say Chrysler did for Talons compared to the Eclipses. Some of them had them, but uh, all the Talons in the early days for sure had, uh, we called it gold, but they were actually a yellow zinc coated hardware. So I've got uh, some similar stuff I'm gonna put in and they were phalange bolts for this water pump. When you do, before you even get everything all ready to go, uh, I always make sure they are identical pump uh, water pumps just in case. Uh, you always want to make sure. And I just take the gasket uh, that I have. This came with the water pump. And uh, um, if I can match it up here, and it does, obviously with the new one, and it matches up. That's how I usually check just to make sure everything looks the same as well. Uh, the other thing... Um, usually comes with a water pump is this o-ring and it's a seal for the, the water pipe that uh, fits in here didn't have any specific water pump rtv or anything for well silicone based you shouldn't use for for glycol anyway so that's why i suggest using something specific that's at least good for good for uh, water pumps and water housings etc blue rtv uh, is something that actually a lot of people use. The Permatex makes a, a specific four water pump. Permatex used to make this stuff. I still have some left. Uh, the old timers used this all the time and swore by it and I've used it and still agree with it. This is really good for removing as well. Uh, so it's good and it also has no setting time so you can just go, go to it. I like to coat my gaskets uh, Pretty much every gasket I put in, I'll put the applicable uh, coating on it as well, just for that extra insurance. And that's what I'm going to put in this one. Basically, I'll I'll just put a, a light layer on both sides of the gasket, and uh, I then I adhere it to here. And uh, I'll put a couple of pieces of hardware bolts in just to kind of hold things, and then I'll line it up, and we'll put it in the in the car. Water pump itself, the bolts uh, have different uh, sizes as well because of how much depth there is here. Um, you can keep track of them. The other thing way I keep track of them, except this one, I actually got to check because I think that's longer than it normally is, but I got to check that. Um, anyway, another way that I always just reference is that when I put them all in, what's protruding out, they all should be the same protrusion out. Uh, and that takes into account and that's the idea of why they're different sizes because of the what they're against here on the water pump itself um, this water pump it's definitely seen better days it does turn okay and it wasn't leaking but uh, definitely some corrosion in there uh, and that's not unusual there's a picture of uh, here the, the bolts and the lengths and the torque settings if you guys want that for your records if you're doing this particular car. Again, every car is different. You probably recall I was gonna do a nice flush on this now that I got the water pump out. So I've got my hose ready and uh, it's a real messy job. Something I gotta find is a little hopper or something that goes right under here to catch the mess and uh, do that. So I got a little bit of a bucket here to try and catch it up there and we'll see how that works. Again, I'm using uh, RO water on this. Uh, make sure it's clean water, uh, which doesn't mean your tap water is ideal for this. Um, you, I mean, you can do it, but I'd recommend using some type of RO or distilled water if you can. I'm actually using hot water too, because hot water is definitely uh, much better for getting deposits off, as you know. Okay, let's give her a go and see what happens. and going as I planned. Definitely got uh, something flushing to do there, huh? 
I had a big mess coming here though. It's raining in here. Ah, I think it's coming clear now. I don't see that it's cleared up there, so it wasn't too bad. You can see the mess down there. Just hang that there. There's the mess. It wasn't as much as I thought. And I just catch some with my hand here. You can see that it's all cleared out. There you go. Yeah. And that's the mess that came out right there. So now I get to mop up. The cooling system's now done for this particular car. And then we'll go on to the next step. I did mention about the timing belt being done. The timing belts are pretty critical uh, in the interference engines. Uh, I'm sure some of you want to tune into that when we get into that episode sometime later. So for now, thank you for joining me. Stay tuned on more pre-work as we get this car to the track eventually, and we will certainly share that with you. Speaking of sharing, please like, share, and subscribe. And until then, enjoy every day, and always make it right. I have to share this with everybody. Um, it's quite an assortment, but it's cool. <laughs> have a look. So when you put some effort into this, I have to say, unpaved. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know what year that is. It's, uh, it'll be a, I'm thinking a late 50s myself, mid 50s. That's quite a, quite a creation, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever it's supposed to be, it's cool. <laughs> 59, it's a 59. Except they've done a little modification in the back. Look at that. Got the moonshine run in the back there.